Well, I'd like to welcome all you guys out to Turning Point, especially those that are watching tonight. Uh, hi, baby. Uh, I want to open up in prayer first. I thank you, Father, and I declare right now your word, Father. I thank you, Lord, as the Holy Spirit just guides and directs my every word, Father. And I pray right now that hearts are open right now to hear what it is that you want them to hear. And I thank you, Father, for your love and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So Pastor Gary, I usually doesn't do this, but he had asked me, I guess it was about 11 o'clock this morning, if I wanted to preach. And he knows me. It takes me three days to get a message together to where I, you know, I'm whatever. And so I just looked at him. I said, okay. He goes, what? I said, okay. And he says, all right. Because it was so weird. God knew that he was going to do this because there's been a couple of things kind of going in my spirit, you know, for the last few days. And so it was really, I, I've never done that. I got on the computer and it was, it was out in 10 minutes. So I know this message is, is for real. Amen? Amen? The title is actually called God Still Blesses. Amen. God Still Blesses. Everyone say God Still, God still Blesses. So in Psalms 106, verses 1 through 5, it says, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his mercy and loving kindness endures forever. Who can put into words the mighty deeds of the Lord? Or who can proclaim all his praise that is due him? Blessed are those who observe justice by honoring God's precepts. Who practice righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when, the favor, when you favor your people. Visit me with your salvation when you rescue them that I may see the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory with your inheritance. See, there are people these days that think when good things happen, it's because it's luck or because they deserve it. And there are even a few of those people that think it's coincidence when good things happen. Well, I don't believe that. I know that every good thing comes from the Lord. Pastor Gary, I'm going to send you to the back of the room. Amen. That was, that was Adrian. <laughs> well, you know, let me, let me give you guys an example. About a month, maybe a month and a half ago, my stove broke. So that's how come I haven't been able to, you know, make any desserts or anything. But uh, I had the family over and we were having, I can't remember what it was, and and I told um, Risco, go ahead and turn off the oven. I'm done with it. So when she went to turn it off, the knob broke. And so I haven't been able to get, you know, be able to bake. And if I bake, I was burning my food. So what had happened was immediately I thought, I want a new stove. But not just any stove. I have a particular stove that I wanted. So, you know, I just, you know, I said, God, I want a new stove. So, what they did is they, you know, they, they looked at it and they said, well, we're just going to replace the handle. And I said, okay. I said, God, I still want a new, new stove. And he knew exactly what kind I wanted. So, then they came back and they said, well, we can't find it. It's, it's the stove so old, they can't, so they're going to have to put a new stove in. I'm like, yes. But it's going to be the same kind of stove you had before. And I thought, okay, but God, you know what kind of stove I want. And it still took so long. So today, they were going to deliver it. And I knew, uh, I think Monday, I found out, you know, they're going to deliver the stove on today. So I was in the store with uh, Amy because I'm making this, this meal for the crew tomorrow night. And um, Gary calls me and he says, I can't believe it. And I said, what? He goes, look at this stove. It's the stove I wanted. And, and you have to understand, we rent, so we don't own our home. The stove I wanted, you don't put in a rent home. You just don't. And so even up until, I mean, the time that they came to deliver it, I knew, I just, I, I thought, you know, God, you're good enough to give me a stove that I want. And he knew exactly what I wanted. And I got it. Amen. So this, this message to me is for real. 
And a lot of people think, oh, it's just a coincidence. No, it's not a coincidence. I'm telling you, goodness comes from God and only God alone. I have an illustration I want to read. Still can't find the one that I really want to do a message on, but I will. Now, this is one that I had wrote back in 1994, and it says, what an attitude. Have you ever noticed how a big semi-truck merges in your lane? When you have the right-of-way, he gives no regard for you. The truck thinks that he's so big that everyone will basically get out of his way. Naturally, most people do. They feel he won't stop, so they go a different direction. But no matter how small a police car is, that truck will stop. Why? Because the policeman has the authority to make that truck driver stop. The truck driver knows it. He sees the authority and knows the power the police car represents. Isn't that how Satan tries to run over our lives? Isn't the car like most Christians these days? There are very few Christian policemen in today's life. As Christians, we are children of God. No matter what we look like on the outside, we carry the badge of authority inside. We do not change our direction because of Satan. We make Satan stop because of who Jesus is on the inside. And I thought this was so perfect because how many people would have just stopped? After they, after they said, no, we're just going to replace the knob, how many people would have said, oh, I guess they're just going to replace the knob? But I was like, I want this certain kind of stove. What would they have done when they said they're going to replace and give me exactly the same size stove I had? Most people went, okay, no. I am stubborn. And when I know what God, I know what God can do. And I thought, mm -mm, I want that certain kind of phone, that stove. And this morning when I woke up, I thought, you know, God, I don't know. I'd never, I, we never said anything to the landlord. I said, I know. I know you're going to give me. When Gary called me and told me that in the Walmart, I just, I, I got chills. I was so excited. And Gary's like, I can't believe you're excited about a stove. I said, it's not that. It's a, it's a stove I wanted. It's just the fact that how mighty God is. And he just listened to the fact that I just wanted something. And I wasn't accept anything less than that. Amen? Earlier this week, um, uh, my head was hurting really, you know, a lot. And when I woke up in the middle of the night, my head was still hurting. So, you know, most people just rather just sleep and not get up. And I didn't know what's going on. So it was, it was, it lasted for like three days. And, um, I realized that my mind was causing my body to stress out about things that I know that God had under control. Ca causing worry it, what worrying does, it infects your body. There was a battle going on in my body, mind, and soul between the flesh man and the spirit man. See, we fight with our flesh all the time. The things you want to do versus what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do. Guess who won in that situation? God did. Because, see, my flesh wanted to scream and cry, God, where are you? Do you even see what's happening here right now? And it was like, where is the faith in that? So, you know what I did? Shut my mouth. I wasn't going to say nothing. It wasn't going to be on my face. I wasn't going to mope around. And you know what? People say, I'm not saying anything, but oh my gosh, look at your face. <laughs> Seriously, you know what? I said this a long, long time ago. How many of you, when you're crying and you're in the car, pull the mirror down and look at yourself crying? <laughs> Come on. How many? I have. Right? I mean, some people have ugly cries. People don't need it. People don't want to see that. Right? So when you say that you believe in God, well, show it on your face and keep your mouth shut. We must allow God's kingdom to be established around us. Don't allow the flesh to give Satan a helping hand. Did you hear that? Don't let your flesh help Satan uproot the things your mouth is saying. 
Keep your mouth shut. Amen. Wash your face. Smile when you don't feel like it. Amen. And stop complaining. Oh my gosh, have you been around somebody that complains constantly? And if they ask you, guess what I'm going to say? You know, well, you're going to say this, this, this. No, I don't complain. Oh, that's the kind of my thing you're going to say this, this, and this. No, baby, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> See, to establish God's kingdom... And what establish actually means is to achieve a permanent acceptance or a recognition of it being true. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, in the middle of there, it says, Believe and trust in the Lord your God, and you will be established. Wait, let's say that again. Believe and trust in the Lord your God, and you will be established. God is so good. And it's not because I got my oven. As a matter of fact, I used it today to make the garlic bread. The first thing I made. I was going to make a salsa for tomorrow night's dinner, and yes, you guys are going to have salsa. And I thought, no, I'm going to make the garlic bread first. Because God should always come first. Amen. Amen? What Jesus did on the cross is real. I don't care what you think you hear or what you think you know. Jesus is for real. And what Jesus did was what God wanted him to do when he came to earth and did everything that he did before the cross, on the cross, and after the cross. I had to tell Kay, explain to them, you know, some people may not want me to be a children's church pastor because I had I had mostly boys. Well, I had all boys, and then a little girl showed up at the end. But that was after I finished in telling them a scary story. Because I had the boys. I had boys. You have to grab their interest. So I said, "Do you guys want to? You want to hear a story that's they never tell you in Sunday school?" And all the boys are like, "Yeah." I mean, Kenji even sat up in the chair. Yeah. I said, okay, are you sure? Yeah. I said, when Jesus died for those three days, what do you think he did? Uh, heaven? Nope. Uh, went to see his friends? Nope. I said, he went to hell. And they, their eyes got big, and, and I said, and you know why? And they're like, and now they're like in my face. Why? I'm like, because he loves you. And he fought the devil, he beat the devil up, and he took the keys. Amen. And they're just looking at me. So I had to tell, I had to explain to Kay. Now, you know, if William comes to you and he kind of gets the story mixed up, I was, you know, trying to make it, trying to make it interesting for the, for the kids. Then I kind of explained about what Jesus actually, what he actually went through with the whipping before he got on the cross. And they were interested so I asked Ritzko, I said, did you, the boys tell you anything about Sunday school? And she goes, no. And Zachary was telling them, yeah, Jesus fought the, the devil. And Zach, uh, Kenji immediately goes, and he won. <laughs> what else do you need to know? Right. Nothing. Nothing. See, there are so many people in the world that think, you know, oh, you know, woe is me. This is happening, whatever, you know. Stop. Stop. Everyone goes through it. Do I go through it? Yes. Pastor Gary, yes. Watch your mouth. What do you want to establish? The kingdom. Remember, I could hear Kenji's voice. And he won. And he won. He won. See, you know, I am excited about myself. I can't lie. But, you know, it's not just that. It's just, it's amazing how mighty God is. And he's willing to hear some person down on earth because I believe what God said he's going to do for me. Amen. And it's a stove. But, I mean, he's done so much more. The fact that, that Satan was attacking me in my body and in my mind and, and everything, you know, and I'm like, no. No, 
Uh uh. And I wasn't about to release it out of my mouth. We have to learn when you open your mouth, you establish the kingdom around you. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I am so excited to be a part of this family. And I want to. Maybe you were at one time and you decided, no, this family's not for me. But I, I just want to give you the opportunity. Hey, if you want to be a part of this family, and I'm not actually talking about this church, but I'm talking about the family of God. If you, really, if you want to be a part of this and have the joy and, and understand that, you know, when we establish something, what are you establishing around you? Establishing God's kingdom? Are you, or are you just stroking in your flesh and just saying, no, you know, I think I'll just go along with the world. Do you want something better? Right. Amen. So I'm just going to, you know, ask. Everyone just kind of close your eyes. Except you guys on Facebook. You know, if, if you've been there and then you, you think that you decided to walk away from the family, but you want to be a part of this family again, I just want you just real fast, just lift your hands up and put it right, right back down. You just want to make sure that you are part of this family. Just lift your hand back up and right back down. You know, and it doesn't matter if you've done it 50 times. What matters is you're still willing to listen to the Holy Spirit. And if you're there and maybe some of you, well, I'm not going to do it because, you know, what would so-and-so think? Well, that so-and-so is not going to be there when you, during that judgment day. But you know what? If you're a part of this family, that judgment doesn't have to come to you. So if you decided, just, just repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart. Make yourself real to me. I declare my life, your life. And I thank you that you died on the cross but you rose from the grave and you won. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Uh, that was excellent. That was excellent. And uh, you got to understand the way she described the stove and everything. <laughs> Mississippi, uh, across town here, praise God, it's going to be great, and there's one speaker that's really dynamic, I don't want to miss this guy, named Gary Riley, he's fantastic, uh, now, now there's a lot of good speakers, and a lot of good, I mean, there's some great ones, Pastor Norris will be there too, Pastor John McGee, I mean, there's just a bunch of great guys, there's some uh, really fantastic time, and just looking forward to it, and uh, you guys go back and get some more grub, more food, and just enjoy the day. Uh, we'll see you later, Facebook. Have a great day.